Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 116 of the Audible Farm Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Couchtown Coffee. Couchtown Coffee is roasted in Iowa, and they will ship roasted beans to your house. That's awesome. I uh, I love Couchtown Coffee. Uh, it's pretty much the only coffee I ever drink, unless I accidentally don't order some and then I run out, which usually leads to a you know slightly <laughs> slightly aggravated couple of days where I have to drink coffee that is not my favorite. That's because Couchtown is my favorite. So if you guys want to uh, experience one of my favorite coffees I've ever had in my entire life, and that's not hyperbole or joke or anything, it is um, easily one of the best coffees I've ever had. Go to CouchtownCoffee.com, find a coffee you like, make an order. They will roast beans specifically for you and then ship them to your house. All you got to do is grind them up and make coffee. Probably some of the best coffee you'll ever have. Um, that is my opinion, but hey, it's not a not a falsified opinion in any fashion. I actually really, really enjoy Couchtown Coffee, and I'm fairly confident you will too. So check it out. If coffee is your thing, go to uh, www.couchtowncoffee.com, find a coffee, make an order, and when you do... Enter the code word Audible Farm and you can save 20%. So let them know Audible Farm sent you and save 20% on your order. Uh, makes great holiday gifts too, people. So uh, check it out, CouchtownCoffee.com. This week I'm sitting down alone. I uh, don't have a guest this week. So this week I'm sitting down alone. I discuss a handful of things um, in the music scene that I've seen going on and... Um, well, I'm not really going to preface any of it in the, in the intro here. I'm just going to kind of let you guys go through it. Otherwise, I talk about the the YouTube channel, um, some of the things we've got going over there on the Audible Farm YouTube channel. So check that out. Um, all I, I pretty much just talk about all sorts of stuff, whatever kind of comes to mind, as well as some of the things I had written down. So hope you guys enjoy the episode. I'm sitting down alone. I'll see you on the other side of the intro. It's the Audible Farm Podcast. With your host, Peter Stockdale. Hey, what's up everybody? Today I'm sitting down alone. I uh, didn't book a guest for this week. I just, I don't know, just slipped in my mind or uh, got busy with other things and uh you know, it's kind of an odd time. It's not easy to book appointments with people. Some people want to do face-to-face -face appointments, and it's not, like I said, it's just the weird time, and it's not always easy to meet face-to-face -face with people, and uh, it's understandable because not everybody is as comfortable with technology, and not everybody knows how to use, you know, Skype and things like that to, to do the remote podcast the way I need to do them. So, Instead of doubling up on a guest that I've done recently, which was something I had considered, I figured, you know, there's not too much has changed in, in three, four, or five weeks since I've talked to a couple of the people that are a little bit more local to me. So what I decided to do instead was sit down alone and uh, just kind of discuss a few things. You know, it's like I said, it's a weird time. I've I noticed there's a lot of people who are refusing to play shows, and there are some people who are choosing to play shows and it a lot of that I think depends on the person and what they have available to them um, some people this is their only income so that's the only thing they have available to them when it comes down to to making any sort of money so I you know it comes down to I think just given the situation you have to kind of consider you know who's taking the bookings and and what they're doing with them uh, it's not always you know I've I've seen it both ends of it on on the internet from from the entire music scene depending on where you go on what platform people are a little bit more vocal than others but um like I said it just comes down to I think you just have to consider you know who's playing shows and how they're playing them and and like I said some people this is their only form of income and uh that's you know that's something that does need to be considered before these people get lamb blasted online because like I said, I've, I've seen it on both ends of the spectrum where some people are saying, um, I don't care well, I'm going to go into public one way or the other. And I've seen other people say, I'm not going into public at all, not even to play shows, not for paying gigs, etc. And, you know, teach their own. I, I understand you've got to live your life the way you want to live it. But that's, that's just kind of something I wanted to open up this podcast with because I've seen a, um, a very big separation in the music scene from, uh, 
these opinions that people have and and how they feel about them and how they're treating other people because of it and uh, i don't know it's just not too kosher to um i guess blacklist somebody or something like that because of this and it's not like there's a ton of it going on but i've seen some people online um saying you know pretty mean things about some people um either choosing to play shows or not choosing to play shows and you know like i said i don't know if it's just me being slightly more grounded or or having so many people in my um, network that are musicians but like i said some people this is their only income they have no other option and um, other people uh, that this is not their only income are choosing to stay home and i think both people are correct in their own respects to choose the path that they feel like they need to choose so uh, yeah, I guess the one thing I would have to say is uh, the music scene is not always the most positive scene. And before we go out there making it even more negative, there's no, um, I mean, nothing really looks worse than musicians saying other musicians are bad. It just kind of lowers the bar for everybody, you know. Um, I, I listen to a lot of comedy podcasts and they talk about that in the comedy scene when there's comedians lowballing other comedians and saying bad things about them it's it kind of lowers the whole gist of what everything that is as you know as comedy and i don't want to see that happen to the music scene um you know we've discussed it on the podcast before it's not like there's you know thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to be made in the music scene being a local musician some people can pull it off but uh like like i said some people this is their only income and even though some of the money might not be you know, to some people, they might turn their nose up at it. This is what they live off of. So, um, yeah, it just comes back to, you know, you got to understand, you got to see the bigger picture, um, not judge anyone, which is, you know, that's a tough thing for anybody to do. I don't care who you are and what side of the spectrum you sit on as far as a lot of that stuff, but we all cast judgment in some form or another, and it's got to do our best not to, you know, um, (laughs) The recent elections a good a good another polarizing thing that had a lot of people separated and um, I honestly couldn't care less who anybody voted for and even that's gotten me in hot water just not not really caring you know people think I should care more than I do and I I think I care plenty enough and uh, you know it's just kind of a weird time and a weird thing and I just want everybody to remain you know as positive as they can be because like I said I've seen I've seen people on both sides attacking one another um in the within the music scene um online and it's not cool uh some of it as as dumb as it sounds gets you know the traffic of that negativity goes through the audible farm page sometimes because people will comment on things and you know the benefit of that is is i've i've set up enough filters to kind of hold a few comments on a few different sites and some don't allow for those kind of filters but i i have actually called a couple people out and said you know i'm not going to delete this but is is this in your best interest to have your name attached to this out here you know when it's when it's just your opinion about something and you know they've taken it down and kudos to them i uh, appreciate you guys um that have thought you know not only It's kind of, you know, upsetting that things like that get posted in the first place, but almost every single person has taken everything negative down. So I want to say thank you. Um, I'm not forcing anyone's hand online socially. If you want to, if you want to do whatever you want, go for it. Um, I talked about it on a couple other podcasts, but there were a few people that have retracted from, you know, what I'm doing and it's not like I'm doing anything, um, ludicrously crazy. I'm not standing on um a soapbox saying these are the way you know everything has to be or i'm not i'm not doing any of that i'm just i'm just a a guy talking to people on the internet and i guess if if you feel negatively about it go ahead and leave a comment if you feel positively about it go ahead and leave a comment um i'm open to everything i think it just kind of helps everybody i just want everyone to get to know each other a little bit better and i understand some people don't like certain guests based on you know, this one thing, this one person did one time upset me so much that now I'm just going to go on the internet and say negative things about them forever. Um, there are people like that out there and, you know, you just got to kind of roll with it and go, you know, I'm I'm not going to, I'm not going to waste any of my time trying to counteract what they're doing, but it's, you just have to, to just go with it because those people are out there. I mean, even before the internet, those people were out there in the real world and, uh, you know, a lot of us got by without paying them too much time or giving them any of our energy. So 
that's kind of the the thought process I have on this. You know, if you guys are out there creating things and doing cool things, and there's people out there that are turning their nose up at it, big deal. You know, just keep making what you're making. Um, almost every single guest I've talked to, I've been more than blown away by their musical capabilities, and you know, that's just just one of those things I feel like from this I've learned just being the host, I've learned to see things from more sides than just the side I see things from. A lot of times guests will bring up points where um, it really kind of makes me think uh, about, you know, the different paths everybody has to take, even though we're all kind of on the same journey, everyone's on a different path from point A to point B. So I do really appreciate it when, you know, people write in and tell me how things are going. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, speaking of which I did actually, um, I did have a thing I was thinking, I've got a YouTube channel. It's been slowly growing over the last couple of years. I started out, um, audible farm, basically just doing band videos. I would record bands with, um, either a GoPro or a phone or something, and then record some audio and then splice them together and throw them up on YouTube all of it with the band's permission, um, and that was where the name Audible Farm came from. I just farmed up all this content from other people with their permission. Uh, I have to say that 400 times because people still accuse me of stealing people's videos, um, which I have not. I have put them all up with permission from the bands and everyone in the band, so that's how they go up there. And believe it or not, I've recorded a pile of videos where bands have told me, no, don't put it up, and I haven't. And uh, I never do, and I never will if they don't want me to because... I have, you know, I respect the way bands, every band wants to market themselves in a different way and it wants to do things differently. And the whole reason I started Audible Farm was for, you know, mostly just like I went to a lot of punk shows. A lot of those bands are kind of just startup bands. They don't have the funds to make albums and things like that. So this gave them a little bit of an exposure and, you know, maybe people don't know how to run YouTube or do any of the video editing or audio editing. And I'm, I know enough. I'm a novice, but I know enough to pull it off. So that's where I figured I could, you know, lend a hand and do this with, you know, for people. So that's what the YouTube channel started out as. And, uh, you know, when I started the podcast, it became the home for the podcast as well. So there's band videos there. There's podcast episodes there. Um, all of the audio episodes are there as well as, uh, video clips, video clips. I started doing video for the podcast on episode 100 it was just kind of a whim. I did it with Scott Kirkhart. He was like, let's do episode what's 100. Let's make it big. Let's do something fun. So I set up a camera and I was like, well, we'll do video for this. And I set up a Patreon page and, and attached it to that. So, um, there's video clips available on the YouTube channel. Um, the YouTube channel, by the way, is youtube.com slash audible farm. If you want to go to the YouTube audible farm, um, channel, there's, like I said, the podcast is there. There's video clips of the podcast. There's also band videos there. And, uh, you know, I've, I've dabbled over the years in kind of like modding and fixing up guitars. Um, I'm no, by no means a professional, but I, uh, I kind of know what I'm doing. So uh, you can watch me kind of stumble my way through some stuff. I'm still learning, and that's kind of one of the fun things about the videos to watch how they progress when I start to learn how to do new things. And, and even then, sometimes I would finish a video and have a guitar that was, you know, quote unquote finished. And when, by the time I, you know, played it enough, I ended up modding it even further. And I've thought about doing updated videos for a few of those, because a few of those guitars have changed a little bit over time. And, you know, I, uh, I made some videos for some of those. My original one was a, a blue hydro dip Les Paul. You can go on YouTube and search hydro dip Les Paul. It's the first video up there. It's, it's got 14,000 views or something like that. It's, it went semi-viral. I shared it in a, a a Reddit page, I believe, and uh, it got shared around quite a bit to the point where it, you know, fit in the algorithm somehow. Where when people search for hydro dip videos, it's in there. So, you know, that was something that I uh, I make still make videos for those. I've hydro dipped a few other guitars. I've refinished guitars. I've got some modifications on there. Um, one of the fun videos on there was somebody had a smashed acoustic guitar. Um, I'm talking smash. The neck was broke out of it and everything. And I fixed it all back up. I, I, I don't want to say like, it's not like a professional job. There are uh, plenty of YouTube channels that do professional style repairs, including one in Iowa, uh, shoemaker guitar works. Shout out to shoemaker. Uh, you know, that's, that's been one of the fun channels to watch recently. He shows, uh, him 
repairing guitars, uh, multi shot videos, you know, where it's like, this is day one, this is day two, this is where the repairs are at. The, uh, the Facebook page for that is also really good for showing some of those shot by shot things with pictures. So if you're into like the professional, professional, actual luthier type stuff, uh, shoemaker guitar works, it's right out of Iowa here. Uh, I think it's on the East coast. I don't want to say a town because I don't want to say it wrong, but I know shoemaker guitar works is, mm, Mm, quad cities area i'm gonna if i got it wrong i'm sorry but that's uh the youtube channel's cool you should check that out but like i said i got a video on there where i took a smashed acoustic guitar and i fixed it uh i modded it out i put all the knobs in different places i fixed the electronics in it which were broken which was something that was really cool i'm getting a lot more comfortable doing all of that type of work i can really do some crazy wirings and pretty good with a soldering gun now but uh we put a washboard in the guitar we added a piezo pickup to it for the washboard so the, even the washboard has a little bit of you know you has its own output you can send it to its own channel and mix it however you want so you know we did some fun stuff like that the guitar is yet to be utilized live but it's been tons of fun to play behind the scenes you know especially since you know it was just smashed junk guitar before then and now it actually you put strings on it and it worked it's it's pretty cool it's pretty cool so uh there's a video of me fin refinishing that up there on the youtube channel i've had a lot of people you know tell me oh you got to do more with your youtube channel it's good but it needs something else and um you know i'm open to ideas if anybody's got any i've i've had a few people shoot me some ideas and and a lot of the ideas are good uh the only thing i i have that's kind of my uh, the thing I'm holding back on on a few of these ideas, like uh, someone wanted me to do like rig rundowns. And so that would be like uh, this person in this band uses this equipment, which is which is a cool idea. And I like it. But, you know, there's a weird dichotomy in the gear world, too, where some people turn their nose up at other people's gear selection. And I um, I get it to an extent. I'm, you know, a self-proclaimed gear snob to an extent but i also you know i also understand everybody has a preference everybody finds the gear they like they they use it the way they want to use it and everybody uses their gear differently i know people who have the same exact pedals i do um with the same basic amp setups that i use at certain places and it sounds completely different just because that's how they use their amp and pedals and guitar and you know, it's just one of those things that comes back to like, this is how the person chooses to do what they want to do. And far be it for me to tell them they're doing it wrong. If, if anything, I look at it and I say, well, that's really neat. This one thing you're doing, I'm going to try and emulate that, um, but make it my own, you know? So I, I try and do some of that to an extent, but I also thought, you know, like I said, the gear snobbery thing, I didn't want to put anybody's gear out there and have people turn their nose up at them and be like, oh, I don't want to go see you play live because you're not using a, a Strymon Big Sky, you know, or something, you know, nuts like that. And it's like, I get it, but you can pull off a lot of crazy stuff with uh, an economy setup, which is, <laughs> I mean, you can see if you're watching the the video version of this, you can see there's a couple amps behind me, but I've actually found my, my home playing these modest setups, you know, um, one pedal, maybe um, one amp everything you can carry in like one load. I don't know what got me started on this trend, but I, I maybe some of it was dragging heavy gear around <laughs> and getting tired of it, which has been something that's been, you know, on my mind. I wouldn't mind trying to have a smaller gear set up. It would actually, I think to an extent, you know, help me out. Um, I just get tired of lugging, you know, big four by 12s and things everywhere. So if I can get away with a little combo amp, why not? Why not? You know, and I, I, I like those modest setups and I for a long time was just like, ah, you need more than this. You need, you know, big stack, you need, you know, all these pedals and stuff. And, uh, you know, as of late, I just kind of been steering away from it, uh, just going simple setup. And I, some of that comes from watching people be able to pull it off live and you're like, well, this is so cool. I want to do that, you know? So I try my best and then you just get comfortable without having everything. Um, for a long time, I felt very naked without a, like a giant pedal board set up with effects and stuff, you know, because I felt, oh, I want to, I want to paint my sound to sound like this. So you tap on these pedals or this, that, and the other. But when you just have a guitar straight in, you don't really have many choices. So it's like we need to try and finesse some sound out of that. And maybe that was, you know, the the trick I needed to learn was how to finesse sounds out of a like a class A style little amp, and like. 
that's the other thing about this is these gear talk type things. I know there's a lot of people that listen to the podcast that as soon as I hit gear talk, they just shut off the podcast. So I don't want to like, I don't know. There's another fear I have, I guess, is am I going to be making a, a, a little show, a little snippet of a show online that no one's going to watch because believe it or not, that's been like the biggest complaint I have on the podcast is say, Oh, when you start talking gear, I, I tune out and some people that's what they tune into though. So there could be a, a nice lane for that, but there's also um, another thing that kind of bothers me, I guess, is I, I have, like I said, I have such a large network of friends. I'm in so many groups. Um, I have so many people that I follow and online and so many bands. I see uh, stolen gear pop up sometimes where people are like, this was stolen out of my car. Or this was stolen out after a gig here or, you know, out of a trailer there. And, it doesn't happen much, but it happens enough, and I don't know why it upsets me so much. It it does. It uh, drives me nuts, and that's probably because um, I know how hard people work for their gear. You know, I don't even have like the highest end gear at all. Like, I go to a show. I I there's so many people with so much better gear than I have. And I think to myself, like, I wouldn't want my stuff getting stolen, let alone their stuff getting stolen or to lose a guitar, you know, to somebody who uses guitar in their hobby and that's what they do. You know, that's, that's bad. That's uh, like, that's, I, it's hard to say like what that's like losing. It's like, it's like losing the driver door off your car. Can you live without it? It's like, yeah, sure. But what a massive inconvenience. Like, can you replace it? Yeah. But at what financial cost, you know, and some people don't want their driver door taken off their car because they've got a nice car. And some people got a junky car and they don't want their driver door, you know. So it's this big thing that, like, I don't want anybody's gear getting over publicized. I see the goofy comments that get left online on people when they post expensive gear for sale on these uh, for sale groups. And people are just like, what's your, you know, what do, what's your area? Can you, you know, like, why would somebody disclose their location specifically in the comments section? It, I, there's just goofy stuff. Or I've even seen people post like odd music equipment where it's like, this is some rack mount, whatever compressor nonsense thingy, but it's like high dollar. And someone will be like, what is this used for? And it's like, well, you, you probably don't know. You just want us more information, maybe not even to buy it, but maybe just to, I don't know. I'm just, I'm very leery of people online and, um, all of their intentions, especially, you know, as of late. And then you, like I said, you see in the for sale sites every now and then somebody, oh, this guitar got stolen and it happens to even, uh, quote unquote, the big boys. I want to say, um, don't quote me on the company, but maybe it was Sweetwater. Some company recently had a, um, some guitars fall out of the truck, I guess was like the quote I saw online. But, you know, somebody stole some guitars that were some high-end guitars from an actual guitar company that produces them and sells them and ships them around. And, you know, I don't know if any of those will ever get found. But I mean, I've even talked about the stolen guitar thing online where there's, um, you know, an underground market for it, supposedly for these like famous people, stolen instruments and I, I don't know. So the whole thing just bothers me. I don't, if you want to see what somebody's using live, go to a show and watch them and then ask them if you're really that interested. If you're like me and you're a pedal guy, you know, go and be like, Hey, um, what do these pedals do? Or like, what kind of a dry, you know, overdrive are you using? Or are you using an overdrive, you know, or I, I try to s stick that route instead. So that was like one show that honestly, I really wouldn't have minded doing too much, but I, um, like I said, I'm, I'm a little leery of it and I don't want to invite, you know, gear snobs to judge people based on the gear they use live or, or whatever. So plus everything changes so much. I mean, um, I'm, I'm a guy who uses like a, I, I, for the most part, when I'm playing with a band, I use one guitar, one amp and that's it. Like, um, you know, it might change from band to band, but I'm not in like a bazillion band. So I've only got a few setups that I use in places. So, you know, there are people though that swap out their gear. I'm going to get a new guitar every year and then sell my old one off. So people end up, you know, running that gambit. I've seen people, you know, I use this amp and then, you know, it blew up and then I had to buy a new one, you know, or whatever. So that's how they switch their gear around. And, and, you know, some of that is also based on the fact that, you know, maybe they don't know how to use some of their gear. They're rough on it and it breaks, but you know, uh, I, it's just like a weird concept of a show. I think it'd be fun, but at the same time, I, I think it'd be kind of a rough show to try to pull off. 
Um, but I, I mean, if you have ideas for shows for like a YouTube channel, I've had other ideas like uh, interviewing people backstage, like before a show or in between sets or, or directly after a set. But it's always tough to, you know, bother someone before, during or after a set because they're either hauling their stuff on stage or off stage or, or they're taking the only break of the day, you know, while, while I'm there enjoying a show, the whole thing to me is a break because I'm not playing, but to them, <laughs> well, to them, they have, you know, they have to play and then they take a break and that's an actual break for them. So they might not want to like take their 10 minute break to sit down and talk to me. But I've thought about some stuff like that, like uh, some on the side interviews, you know, talking to people about how they think the gig is going or where they're at or, or, you know, just maybe doing like a, a show dedicated only to upcoming gigs that are, you know, around areas. I've thought about that as well. Um, I've thought about doing, you know, album reviews and things like that um it comes back down to i am not the uh i'm not like a professional album review guy i don't know if there's such a thing or if how somebody gets qualified to do that but i'm i'm open to just about any idea anybody would have to you know send my way as far as ways to beef up the youtube channel or something that you might think you might want to watch or or something to that extent um but the YouTube channel is still, you know, it's it's there, it's rocking. There's every Saturday, there's new YouTube video clips of the episodes that come out on Thursday. So every Thursday and Saturday, guaranteed, there's new videos up. Um, there are also band videos and, like I said, guitar videos and mod videos that get uploaded uh, at random, I will say. Uh, I try to do, you know, I try to maybe make a guitar video every month or two or maybe three um they kind of come and go as i finish projects and and whenever the fire gets lit under me to to really finish them you know and and do all the the finishing work because that's the most time consuming work of all when you're trying to finish a guitar is is you know all of that finishing stuff the clear coat and and you know the painting and the priming and everything that's probably the shortest amount of time but when you got to get everything rewired and reset up you know and let it let everything sit and cure it takes it takes a while so those those videos kind of come and go but you know two days a week guaranteed there's new videos up there so if you guys are looking for other content i'm i'm open to suggestions um send them in uh you go to the audible farm uh, youtube channel leave a comment somewhere um or email us audiblefarm at gmail.com or just go to audiblefarm.com and there's a uh, contact us thing at the bottom. You can just fill out a form and say, Hey, I want to see this on, on your YouTube channel and boom, I'll, I'll give it a go. Um, as far as guests go, I've, I've had a handful of repeat guests and I've had a handful of new guests as of late. I'm still open to ideas for guests. It's, it's so weird. Cause I get, I get a lot of contacts from people from out of state that want to be on the podcast. And this is for the most part dedicated to Iowa musicians and things like that. And I could, you know, interview out of state people, but I feel like my, um, love for the scene around here is based on the fact that I'm in the scene around here. So I can probably do a little bit more justice to the scene around here by just sticking to that. But I've also contacted people that, um, you know, want to do a podcast, but they want to do it like six months from now. And then I forget, and then they hit me up and it's, it's hard to try to get everything ironed out. And, and like I said, at the intro, it's, a weird time meeting face to face isn't always easy. Uh, doing the Skype interviews is what I've been trying my best to do. Um, I did a recent burst of episodes that I recorded like all within two days of one another, and I just sat down and recorded them all, and then slowly put them out. So I've I've done a little bit of everything to try to um, keep social distancing as much as possible and do everything as you know the best way I can to um, at least keep everyone safe and and try my best to have guests on here to keep people entertained. But if you've got a guest you want on, um, let me know, let them know, have them reach out. I feel it's a lot better when the guest wants to be on the podcast. I've, I've hit people up that, uh, did not want to be on the podcast, but said they would do it anyways. And then sometimes they're not the best guests. Um, but I've had other people that have blown me away where it's like, I barely know this person. And then I come to find out they're one of the best guests I've had. So uh, like I, yeah, I'm, I'm open to anything. Uh, anything's good. Some days could be me having an off day, not knowing the right questions to ask. I always try and put myself in the listener's shoes and ask the right questions. Or, uh, maybe if the person isn't explaining themselves well enough, I ask them to go into more detail. But, you know, like I said, it's, 
It's uh, this is such an unusual beast. I'm a hundred and some episodes in. I'm getting a little bit better at the interview thing, but at the same time, um, if you guys have anybody you want me to interview, uh, have them hit me up or hit me up or drop me a line. Same things as before. Audible Farm at Gmail. Otherwise, you can go to the website, scroll down below. And there's a contact me page there, and you can send a message to Audible Farm, and I'll look at it and try my best to get in contact with people. I know there's been bands out there um, in the punk and rock circles and things like that around Iowa that have been very busy releasing albums, EPs, singles, music videos. And that's all within the last, you know, two months. There's been a handful of albums dropped. There's been a, a handful of music videos that have been dropped as well. They're all amazing. I, I'm stoked. I love seeing all this kind of stuff. I hope to get some of the bands on here to help them promote some of their stuff. So if you're in one of those bands, you've hit me up and I've been kind of lackadaisical. Hit me up again. I'm, like I said, I'm trying my best. I'm staying busy, but I'm trying my best to do as much over Skype as possible. So if that's something you guys can help me pull off, that would be awesome. I'm, um, I'll do face to face interviews, but, um, might end up with a situation where we're sitting pretty far apart. And the other weird thing about that is like the face to face interviews. I, I totally understand people kind of, you know, thinking negatively about it, but at the same rate, this is, um, this is what I have going on. And I'm like I said, I'm trying my best this week, I couldn't find anyone to do a Skype interview and the only face-to-face -face interviews were with people I'd interviewed, you know, within the last 10, 15 episodes already. So I didn't want to double down on them too quickly. So I just said, Hey, I'll do a, I'll do a solo episode. And you know, that's a, one of those weird situations where I'm trying my best not to be looked at negatively doing a podcast and, um, you know, trying not to do too much face-to-face -face stuff with people because I don't want people to, you know, overjudge me on one end, but then I also don't want people to overjudge me on the other end. And that's where I feel this weird thing with, you know, like I mentioned at the beginning, where this weird thing where it's tough to be in the middle these days. You're getting attacked from both ends. So, um, you know, everybody just, just keep your chin up, keep doing what you're doing. Like I said, there's a lot of bands out there putting out new material, new content, new stuff. I I'm loving it. I love that people are, are sticking to their guns and doing what they love to do, which is make music and produce content. And actually, you know, producing worthwhile content, not just some of the garbage I see online is insane. I, I waste so much of my time watching videos for things that are just asinine. And I'm, I thought I, I try to do the best I can to actually get like good content out of the podcasts and actually make the conversations, um, help you learn more about the guest or make it a more of a deep conversation or, uh, you know, try and tackle some topics that, you know, maybe nobody else is tackling or talking about. And I'll, I'll, I'll try to be the one to talk about it. You know, um, it's, it's just the way it goes. I'm the solo podcast is weird too. Cause I don't necessarily know where to go with this. I've got a, if you're watching the video, I've got a sheet of paper with some stuff on it here, but, uh, it's not really, uh, I don't have anyone to bounce ideas off of and, um, it's kind of tough, but Hey, the YouTube channel, it's awesome. If you guys like what we've got going on there, go ahead to go to the YouTube channel. It's audible farm, uh, on YouTube, or you can go youtube.com slash audible farm. And, uh, you know, click the subscribe button, make sure you click that. Then you can see all the videos that show up every single week and, and watch them if you want. And then, uh, you know, the subscribe button's awesome. We've, we're getting close to 200, which is a pretty awesome natural climb, um, for, a, a very regionally based podcast type show on, on YouTube, which it's, it's mind blowing to me that that many people are subscribed and, and actually watching the episodes. There's quite a few people that watch and listen to the episodes each and every week. I've got to say thanks to you guys. Most of all, um, without you, I wouldn't have anything to do. I wouldn't be putting these out. I don't think if there was, you know, I've got 20, 30, 40 people just about every single week, listen to every single episode. And it's really cool. Uh, a lot of them contact me on a semi weekly ish basis somehow or another and say, uh, great episode this week, you know, three weeks ago, I loved that episode too, you know, so they're, they're contacting me and it's making me feel pretty, pretty happy. I'm, I'm glad to know, you know, the stats don't lie online and there's actually people out there listening and I really appreciate it. So, uh, you know, one of the cool things about being a listener to podcasts like this is you can go online, you can be like, I like this podcast and you can tag me and try the best you can to get the audible farm name out there. It doesn't necessarily work as good as word of mouth. Um, word of mouth has always been one of the most, you know, sought after promotional tools. It works the best. So if any of you, uh, enjoy the podcast enough to say something to somebody else about it, 
cheers uh appreciate it otherwise yeah share the share the facebook page around uh tag us on uh, on twitter or instagram say hi to us that's a crazy one is twitter I, I i interact with so many people that are not from my circle it's it's really weird and um it's like i found a whole new following on twitter but it's mostly just other podcasters so if you are in the iowa music scene if your band has a twitter page go check it out check out the audible form twitter give us a follow we'll give you a follow back tweet us something we'll retweet it we'll say hi um i know twitter's not used very much by bands and things like that because it's not it doesn't really lend itself the best to bands and and things of that nature but it's there so if you use it hit me up on twitter otherwise instagram also got instagram the audible farm instagram page is just about as busy as the facebook page i tend to post most of the stuff to facebook so if uh if you're on any of the other platforms you'll surely see all the information that i'm posting but uh a little bit busier on facebook which by the way the facebook page is uh up over a thousand follows and really really close to a thousand likes so if you've got an account and you say hey i I like audible farm give me the thumbs up there and get us closer to that 1000 i've been you know creeping close to that i've talked to a handful of people that said that thousand barrier like the closer you get to it the harder it gets to come out you know overcome it so uh we'll see how close we can get on that because i think last time i checked we were at like 950 or so so uh hats off to everybody it's pretty wild that, like I said, this regional thing, this regional music-based, guest-driven podcast has a, like a thousand likes on Facebook, and they're all, you know, they're all for the most part organic. You know, that's the other crazy thing is I haven't really gone too many places and, and tried to play too many games with who I follow. Instagram, I, I only follow the guests. That's uh, just something I told myself I was going to do. Um, on, on Twitter, I, I follow a lot of podcasts because they follow me back so we we banter about ideas and and talk about each other's stuff so that's about like you know the the best i i can say is like i've on twitter i've follow podcasts and they follow me back and that's the closest i've got to like quote unquote doctoring any of my follows i have never paid for any and i don't plan to because honestly i don't i don't deem it worth my money at the time so that's uh that's one of those cool things. If you like us on any of the social medias, or you follow us, give us a tag, tell us hi, you know, comment on things, uh, thumbs up, likes and pokes and shares and subscriptions, all that stuff helps. It uh you know it makes me smile when people comment things, even if it's the simplest things like oh this is a good episode, and like boom he made me smile. So uh, I gotta say thank you very much to everyone that does that and. Uh, you know, I, I know they're probably not listening, but each week I get a, a pile of new listeners based on the guest and they, they, you know, some of them even say, Hey, I liked what you did here or comment on a post and say, this was a great episode. I'm glad you guys did this or they'll share it out there. So, you know, hats off to all the guests and their friends and family and peer groups for sharing this. You guys are really cool for doing that too. I really appreciate it. Um, there's an audible farm shop as well. Audible farm shop. If you go to shop.audiblefarm.com or you go to the audible farm uh, website you can scroll there there's a button there to go to the shop now, there's t-shirts there's hoodies there's stickers uh hoodies and t-shirts i'm starting to run low on some sizes but we're still still kind of slowly trickling those babies out there so if you want one of those that's the best place to go to get one um this month it's almost over but this month on the patreon channel if you uh subscribe to the patreon page for a dollar a month one dollar a month you get all the video versions of the podcast if you do it for a dollar a month, you get I th- let's see here. You get twenty percent off your shirts. So if you want twenty percent off a podcast shirt, you can you know it's kind of a weird thing. It's a long route to to save a couple bucks, but you can hook me up with a dollar and then I'll give you three dollars off. But that's uh that's a pretty cool thing. So if anybody's looking to buy a shirt, you can do that little trick and and save some money. Um, the only way to get that twenty percent off is to become a Patreon member. So uh, hats off to everyone that's been a Patreon member. I believe we've got four on there now. Um, yeah, it's it's better than nothing, and uh, the people are watching it, so hats off. I have I had somebody message me last week, uh, said this episode was, was awesome, and, you know, they were, had a picture of them watching the video version. So that was really cool. It made me smile quite a bit, too. So uh, hats off to everybody watching um, the, the video versions. Uh, also shout out to everybody watching the video clips on YouTube. If you're watching those video clips and you're like, where's the rest of this video? It's, uh, it's over on Patreon. So if you go to the Patreon channel, um, check it out. It's patreon.com slash audible farm. 
you will find um, for a dollar a month, you'll get all the video versions of the podcast available there. So check that out if that interests you. I got to say thanks to the people that are uh, the patrons there. So thank you very much to the patrons over on Patreon. And uh, thanks to everybody who's bought something from our shop. I really appreciate that too. Um, uh, that's about it, I guess. I don't really have too much else. Um, if you guys have ideas for the YouTube channel, send me send me a line. Um, once again, audiblefarm at gmail.com or just go to audiblefarm.com and uh, fill out the contact form on the bottom and let us know. Or just comment or like or share or poke or, or social media it up. But that's, uh, that's all I got for this week. It's a pretty long episode for just me talking about not much. But, uh, you know, I hope everybody's out there traveling safe. If you're listening to this today, it's, it's Turkey Day. It's Thanksgiving. So I hope you guys are out there traveling safe. And uh, if you're listening to this uh, post Thanksgiving, maybe on your way home, I hope you're still traveling safe. And if you're not traveling anywhere, eh, rock and roll. Um, <laughs> thank you guys uh, very much for listening. Uh, uh, each and every week, it's really cool to have you guys out there each and every week listening to the episode. So uh, hats off to you. Appreciate it. We'll check you next week. Peace. Oh, man, I hope you enjoyed listening to me for half an hour because now you get to listen to me for another couple minutes on the outro. Uh, Huge shout out to the guest this week, me. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Thanks, guys, for listening. I really appreciate it. Uh, I don't really know whether or not solo episodes are that entertaining. I've barely listened to any actually very good solo podcasts. And uh, some of the best ones are you know well I guess, let's just say they're few and far between so i hope i did did justice on this one uh with my my very infrequent solo episodes i don't do them too much usually when i can't book a guest or i don't book a guest or i run into some scheduling issues or or uh, you know maybe i did book a guest in a couple weeks that happened where the guest i did have one booked but something happened and i couldn't do the episode so it happens uh, not frequently, but it happens. So I, got, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, check out all the Audible Farm goodies. Uh, if you really want to know where everything's at, just go to audiblefarm.com. There's links to everything there. So that's uh, that's the home base for everything. If you want to follow us on social media, it's at Audible Farm everywhere. We got the shop. We got the Patreon. There's old episodes with awesome guests. Scroll back through and listen to some of the older episodes you've over, you know, maybe passed over. Or, if you randomly found this episode somehow and you're like, what is this? And then you're like, guests? Well, I'll scroll back through and look. Uh, there's plenty of guests on the, on the past episodes. Uh, you probably know somebody too, so check it out. There's, there's great guests. There's about every 10 episodes that I have, an, I have a guest on there that I'm just like, holy cow, this is awesome. This person, everybody needs to know about this person. This, this person needs to be on the radio, you know, just something. It's, it's really cool. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoy, you know, listen to these as much as I enjoy sitting down talking with these people. Um, even though this week I was talking to myself, which is, you know, debatable as to how much people enjoy somebody talking to themselves. Anyways, that's enough of this nonsense. I'm out of here for the week. It's turkey day. It's turkey time. Gobble, gobble. We'll check you guys next week. Peace.